Matthew Fitzpatrick died in Mannheim, Germany of asphyxia due to ligature strangulation on the 11th of December 2010. There were two autopsies carried out on his body. The first autopsy was completed in Heidelberg, Germany, which took place four days after his death. From this an overview report was produced with a total of nine pictures of evidence taken and a pre-autopsy scan completed. This autopsy lasted a total of one hour and 50 minutes. The second autopsy was completed in Dublin, Ireland a further three days later. From this a comprehensive report was produced with over 180 pictures of evidence taken. This autopsy lasted a total of seven hours. It is important to state that the German authorities initially informed us that they were not going to carry out an autopsy on Matthew's body. However, this then changed when we informed the Mannheim police that we were going to organise an autopsy ourselves. Within 48 hours of this, an autopsy was carried out on Matthew's body in Heidelberg. The difference between the two autopsies is dramatic. The German police will try to maintain that the findings of the Irish autopsy are the same as the German autopsy. However, for the Mannheim police to make such a statement when the differences between the two autopsies is clear means that they did not read the Dublin autopsy or are simply ignoring the differences as it casts a serious shadow of negligence on the autopsy from Heidelberg. In this video I will only go through a small number of injuries Matthew endured. If you wish to look at the full list in more detail, please visit the following website www.justiceformatthew.com The injuries on the back of Matthew's head comprised of a lot of bruising, but more specifically there is a blunt force trauma, which forms a pattern, a sketch of which is shown here. As it is a pattern blunt force trauma, it has been caused by an object. In this case, it could have been caused by an object like a knuckle duster. In the Heidelberg autopsy report, this patterned blunt force trauma has been referred to as a skin irritation. In addition, from the Heidelberg autopsy report, no other bruising on the back of Matthew's head was documented. All bruising can be clearly seen from the photographic evidence taken in the Dublin autopsy. It is also important to state that four years after the autopsy in Heidelberg, when the Heidelberg pathologist, now retired, was presented with photographic evidence, he changed his determination of skin irritation to post-mortem changes. The questions that need to be asked here are, why did the Heidelberg pathologist state that the blunt force trauma was a skin irritation, and then further change this to post-mortem changes? Why did the Heidelberg pathologist, Mannheim police and prosecutor, ignore vital medical evidence that would have told them that Matthew's injuries were inflicted by a third party. Why did the Heidelberg pathologist refuse to communicate with the Irish deputy state pathologist and discuss his findings? It can be fair for us to state that the Heidelberg pathologist and Mannheim prosecutor did not anticipate that we would request a second autopsy. Photographic evidence proves that the injury sustained to the back of Matthew's head was not as a result of skin irritation. For the Heidelberg pathologist, four years later, to change his statement to post-mortem changes is ludicrous and demonstrates the highest level of negligence and incompetence. There was hemorrhaging to the upper and lower areas of Matthew's back. This was not documented in the Heidelberg report. However, it can be clearly seen on the CT scan taken in Heidelberg prior to the first autopsy. There is photographic evidence of this hemorrhaging from the autopsy carried out in Dublin. It has been documented in the Dublin autopsy report that this hemorrhaging can be caused by an extreme force on the back of Matthew, or it has been seen in some cases of submersion in water, i.e. drowning. Either way, this vital piece of evidence was not submitted into the Heidelberg autopsy report because they did not carry out a forensic autopsy and they did not review the CT scans they took. The questions that need to be asked here are Why did the Heidelberg pathologist not carry out a suitable and thorough autopsy on Matthew's body, which would have led them to seeing the hemorrhaging on Matthew's back? Why did the Heidelberg pathologist take a CT scan and not write a report on its findings? 
it is fair for us to state that the pathologist took no interest in determining the real cause of Matthew's death. Why take a CT scan and not review it? Could it be the case that the CT scan was reviewed by the Heidelberg pathologist and radiologist where the hemorrhaging was identified, however they did nothing about it? It must be questioned why the Heidelberg pathologist did not carry out a proper autopsy on the area of Matthew's back. There are three distinct pressure bruise marks on Matthew's elbow, pictures of which have been taken and documented in both autopsies. In the Heidelberg autopsy report, reference to these three bruises were identified as three irregular bruises, however no explanation of how they were caused. Within the Dublin autopsy report, these three pressure bruise marks have been associated definitively with finger pressure marks as if Matthew was being pinned or held down. The questions that need to be asked here are Why did the Heidelberg pathologist not document the potential cause of these bruise marks or any other injury they identified? Why did the Heidelberg pathologist ignore the relevance and importance of these injuries and others on Matthew's body? It is fair for us to state that when the Heidelberg pathologist was given the task of carrying out the autopsy on Matthew's body, he was not up for the task. Not to account for the causes of injuries Matthew endured defeats the objective of determining the cause of death. The Heidelberg pathologist should be held accountable and must answer many unanswered questions on how so many injuries on Matthew's body were missed by them. When you put together all the injuries Matthew endured, it is possible to start building a picture on how he was attacked and murdered. In Matthew's left eye, it was identified in the Heidelberg autopsy that there were white particles found. In addition to this, on Matthew's left eyelid, there were scratch marks identified in both autopsies. It is possible that the white particles found in Matthew's eye was evidence that he was sprayed in the face to incapacitate him, and the scratch marks would back this up. With multiple bruising to his forehead area, the back of his head, and the patterned blunt force trauma to the back of his head, it shows that Matthew was punched and beaten. During the attack and strangulation, further injuries were inflicted on Matthew's body, including defensive injuries. Finally, it is possible that Matthew's body was then dragged as there is bruising under both his armpits. Matthew's body was then left on the floor in the kitchen of his apartment with the belt around his neck. The altercation the neighbours heard in Matthew's apartment in the early hours of the 11th of December 2010 would fit such an attack and as they had stated that the noises came from his bedroom. Therefore Matthew's body must have been dragged into the kitchen. It is difficult to understand why the Heidelberg pathologist would not carry out a professional and forensic autopsy. Taking only one hour and 50 minutes answers why injuries were missed. It is our opinion that the pathologist was led by the police. In other words, the police informed the pathologist that Matthew had taken his own life and the autopsy was really for administrative purposes. Whatever the reason for the German authorities' incompetence in their investigation, it is important that the horrific wrong created by them is mended, and a proper, collaborative and a professional forensic investigation takes place immediately, so it can be clearly stated how Matthew Fitzpatrick came to such a brutal death. Please check out part 4 of the series of vlogs in the case of the murder of Matthew Fitzpatrick.